Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing on with the first person player porn series that I've been working on for the past uh, week or so. And what you're seeing on the screen is where we're going to get to today. I mean, not with the, the muzzle flash or the tracer rounds, we're going to do HUD elements. And I've gone and uh, updated the, uh, the the zip file assets download. Uh, first of all, because it was pointed out to me that I was missing the 8K texture, so uh, that's gone and uh, that's gone and been included. But also because I've added a hit vignette and a, a health and uh, ammo icon that we're going to use in the in our heart. You see these in the example in front of us. So without further ado, let us first get started. So let's just uh, right click here in the uh, content browser in our little blueprints folder and make ourselves a widget blueprint. This will be the cross hair HUD, X hair HUD, that will do. So let's open it up and we're also going to need to, well, add our uh, crosshair images. So let's just grab in uh, image here. We need to set these with our anchor in the center and we need to set the X and Y to the uh, actual dimensions of our image, which is eight in the X and 24 in the Y. And then uh, here in image, we need to search for our crosshair what have I done? Crosshair. What's a little crosshair? Crosshair point. There we go. And that gets us our little crosshair point here, just like that. Now we'll uh, duplicate this guy once with a control W. Oh, we need, to, we need to name these as well so we can keep good track. So this one's pointing straight up. We'll call this one top. Uh, here we go with the, the next one, which will be up in the... Oh, it's in the center. <laughs> there it is, hidden behind the little anchor. Uh, we need to rotate this guy. Uh, where's our... What's our rotation here? Do, 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 do. Angle. There it is. So we'll set our angle to 180. So it's going to be uh, pointing downwards. And this one will be, well, why didn't that, it didn't name itself. Okay, so we need our top. And this one's our bottom. Cool, and we'll duplicate this bottom one here. Move this to the side so we can see it. And our uh, tilt, our angle here again. We'll set it to 90. This one will be uh, this one will be right. There we go. And we'll duplicate this one and come back down to our angle. Our angle will be uh, minus 90. There we go. And we'll call it obviously left. So this sorts out our uh, points here. Let's right, we'll just group them all up. And the beauty of what we're about to do is that we don't even have to position these in the in the uh, uh, designer here in the in the canvas, we can just position them using uh, blueprints. So let's go over to our graph. Uh, we'll delete all these guys. We're not going to need them. Although we will need the if we type in begin play in a hard, what you get is the event construct. So it's going to fire straight away as the uh, as the HUD is built into the into the uh, I guess game. You know when you when you hit play, and then we're going to need to use a set timer by function. We're going to settle this up right now because we're going to make a function to position our um, crosshair. So we'll make a brand new function. Let's call it set crosshair. Okay, so far so good. And the nodes we're going to be using is just set position. Just a simple uh, set position. Oh, you know what? We need to... Uh, it's the, the canvas slot. Canvas slot set position. We have to get our, uh, our um, uh, crosshair points here. We'll just drag one into the frame. Obviously, start with the top one, and we want slot as canvas slot. And then we can hook it up into the set position. So this canvas slot here will just allow us to manipulate the the position, the x and y location of our uh, compass point here in the uh, in the blueprint. Let's split this uh, in position uh, two vector to get our x and our y, and uh, we're ready to go forward. So let's right click, let's get our player pawn, get player pawn. Then we need to cast to the player pawn which is called FPS Pawn. And let's right click this node and convert it to a pure cast. We don't have to worry about uh, confirming it or anything. We're just going to bet that it's going to, going to cast properly. And the thing that we're going to use to manipulate our crosshair, at least in this example, is the player's velocity. So we'll just get velocity. In other words, when the player is moving, the crosshair is going to expand and uh, then we can build on that in some other sort of gameplay ways later. And it's just one example of how you can manipulate the crosshair. We're just going to use velocity in this case. Uh, maybe in the next video or two, we'll get onto, for example, firing to make the crosshair expand, similar to Counter-Strike or uh, Call of Duty even. But for now, we'll just use our velocity. So let's get our vector length from our uh, velocity. There's our vector length. There we go. And what we want to do 
is multiply this by minus one to get the value that we want to be working with. So that's just a, it's a float multiplied by float, and that float is going to be minus one. Just a constant, we don't need to have a variable here. And from here, we can use float interpolation nodes to, uh, you know, to change our location in a sort of smooth way. So let's get an f interp2. This is similar to the, the lerps in, uh, in the material, in your material graphs. It's, a, it's an interpolation. We got our uh, current, our target is going to attempt to go from our current value to our target value in our delta time and at a particular speed. Speaking of, let's start making our variables that we're going to be needing. So what we need is our interpolation speed. So let's make a new float called interp speed. Make sure that it's a float. Uh, let's compile it so we can set our default value. And that default value is going to be 15. Then we can hold and control and drag in to get that value. And we'll also need our upper bound. That's another float, upper bound, and our lower bound. So these are the minimum and maximum extents that the uh, crosshair points are going to be moving, you know, when, when, they, when they do eventually move. And our upper bound, we want to set this to something like uh, negative, we'll go negative 80, and our lower bound, negative 25. Oh, I've got an S in there. Not that. There we go, lower bound. So we got, what was it, upper bound, minus 80. What happened here? Oh, right, minus 25. There we go. All right, so let's uh, drag both of these guys in, our upper and our lower. Our interpolation speed is obviously going to be in our interp speed of our interpolation. We want to right click and get the world delta seconds. World delta, there we go, world delta seconds. This will be our delta time. Unlike the event tick, which you might see in regular blueprints, the world delta seconds, it's going to be a, a hard float that counts how many frames of the, of, the, uh, of the game has passed in any particular time. We can just use this to get our event tick, basically, or rather, well, the world delta seconds when we're not using the actual event tick. Then to get our current position, come out of this slot as canvas slot, and let's uh, just get, get the position. Where is it? Get position. <laughs> there it is, that was weird. Might have, yeah, we need the context sensitive on. That'll uh, reduce the number of things that we deal with at any one time. So this will be plugged into our uh, current, but we want to split this first because we're only going to be using the Y value. Because for our, uh, our top and for our bottom in a second, we're going to need to just manipulate the Y value, just the up and down. So with that plugged in, our target is going to be our, um, the, the result of, of this here, of our uh, cast here, our vector length. Then, when we put our uh, upper and our lower bound to use, let's cancel that autosave. Let's come out of this F interp into a clamp. We've got a clamp, brackets float, and then our upper bound is going to be our minimum, and our lower bound will be our maximum. So far, so good. And then the result of this clamp gets plugged into our Y position here. Then let's multiply, uh, we'll multiply these three nodes here, our set position, our slot, and this, uh, this top uh, one here. Although we'll delete the top and grab the bottom. Let's get that, plug this in, hook this up to our function. And then we want to come out of this clamp here, multiply by negative one to invert our values, and then hook this up as our Y position. All right, this handles our top and our bottom uh, crosshair points. And now all we need to do is grab all of these guys, control W to duplicate them, and we'll move them over here just slightly out of the way, and then replace top and bottom uh, with left and right. We go left for the left one and right for our inverted one. There we go, hooking these up and we want to move our Y positions up to X. So hold and control to grab the pin and just pin them up into the, into the X position. And furthermore, we have to do the same for our get position here. We want to move this up into the X. We're not dealing with uh, vertical values anymore. We're dealing with horizontal values. And the target of this F interp is going to be the result of this vector length here. And this should handle it for our uh, crosshair function. So back in the event graph, here we have our set timer by function name. The function name is obviously going to be set crosshair, making doubly sure that we get the name right. The time, we'll just go zero points, uh, zero one, and tick looping so that it keeps, keeps firing as we need it. All right, then back in our content browser, let's right click, make ourselves a new HUD. We want user interface. No, we don't. Is it in blueprints? Oh, you know what we'll do? We'll just go blueprint class, and uh, in this all classes, we'll just find the HUD. We'll make ourselves a fresh HUD. Call it FPS 
I'll call it FPS underscore HUD. Just like that. All right, let's open him up. Now our HUD blueprint is just another blueprint that we can use uh, in our projects to uh, well present things on screen. We get access to a few different uh, nodes and, and some other sort of tricky things, but we're just gonna go with the super basics so that we don't have to keep all these things clogged up in our, uh, in our uh, player pawns. So let's just make a begin play node. Come out here into a create widget. We wanna make our crosshair. Just like that. And then from this return value, just add to viewport. And we're done for the time being. So let's compile that, save it. Remember to save our crosshair HUD. Then go back into our world. We have our uh, pawn setters, our default class. Let's just hit play. Okay, we're not seeing it. All uh, oh right, we have to set our HUD as well. God, I was looking right at it. So the HUD that we want to set is the one that we just made, FPS underscore HUD. All right, and now when we hit play, there we go. And now you see as we move, we're now Hmm, okay, our speed might be a little bit quick, but we can adjust that. We can just adjust that uh, interpolation speed in our crosshair. So let's just why not? Why not? You know, let's just do that now. We'll set this. Um, I think up will make it slower. Oh, made the toolbar up here. All right, compile, play. Yeah, maybe maybe it is lower. Try five. Yeah, so that'll, that'll slow it down. Just a matter of tweaking these values to get a result that you like. Anyway, with the crosshair done, we can save that and move forward. So the next thing we'll do is uh, right click here, we'll make ourselves another HUD, and this will be our ammo health underscore HUD. Oop, there we go, keep things consistent. Our ammo and our health. Okay, and we wanna get some images in here. Um, make sure that we anchor all these to the center. Wanna keep everything looking good. The size will go 192 by 192, and our image is going to be our uh, our icons for ammo and for health. So there's our ammo um, image. Let's just Control W to duplicate it, and then get our icon for health. All right, we'll position these somewhere where it where it makes sense, somewhere down in the corners here, and we're also going to need a third image, uh, also set to the center. This one will be our slash. You might have noticed this in the, in the in the download pack. We'll just size this up somewhere. I don't quite know what the. I think it's 100 by 100. Actually, I think it's. I think it's 120 by 120. Or 100, 124 maybe. Whatever. That's that's totally fine. So we'll just drag this down, and then let's get some text going on. We'll bring some text in. Uh, we'll make this a hash hash. We want a double digit number. And this one will be, uh, let's call it our max ammo. And we'll uh, knock about with our font for a bit. We'll make things look nice. So we're going with Roboto. Our size can be bigger, not 50 maybe, but 30, 40, 40. <laughs> we'll go with 40. And uh, make ourselves an outline of say, yeah, five, five pixels. So this is our max ammo, which we've just named like that. Let's duplicate this guy. This text block is going to be our current ammo. And where did that drop? Up here. So I want us to anchor that back to the center. In fact, I think I missed that with our, yeah, yeah. So remember to keep everything anchored to the center. Grab our current ammo. And I got these the wrong way around. Our max ammo goes on the other side of the slash. There is our current ammo. Okay, position something like that. It's totally fine. That's Keep things looking neat. All right, let's duplicate our text one more time. This one will be called health. This will control our health. And we'll put this somewhere over here and I might even make it bigger, make this something like 60. All right, with that all done, compile and save. And while we're here, let's open up our FPS pawn and make ourselves a new variable. This one health, and it's going to be an integer, which after we compile, will default to 100. 100 will be full health. So we compile and save. And uh, yeah, so that's all done in our pawn. That's all we have to do there. So let's uh, sort out how we're going to make these uh, text boxes here display what we want to display. And to do that, uh, we'll start with our current ammo. Let's come over here to the right. Here where we see content, the text, the, the text to display. Over on the right of that, we have a bind. Let's click create binding. And that makes a sort of function it's going to return a string to display as the text. And that return value can be, well, anything that we want. So let's right click, 
get the player character and then let's cast to our pawn cast to the fps pawn right click this guy convert it to a pure cast like before and then out of here let's get not our health no we want to we want to get our weapon get primary weapon and then get our ammo count and plug that into the string there we go it'll make yourself a uh, two text uh, node here which literally all it does is just converts this uh this integer into the text that we can display on our string so we'll compile that save let's grab all of this and copy because we want to go back to our designer find our max ammo and do the same thing we'll hit bind oh no don't want to do that remove that binding create binding is what we want this is our max ammo binding so then we'll paste in uh, our uh, nodes from before delete the ammo count because this time we want our max ammo get max ammo plug that in plug that into our return node compile and save and similarly for our health we're going to do very much the same thing so we'll just create a binding paste in these nodes but we can delete our weapon and our ammo count because we want to come straight out of our pawn here and just get our health value get health plug in oh, where are we I'm just gonna try to move these things in for a bit more neatness and then compile save and uh oh remember to plug in out to text no don't know why that was disconnected and uh then add it to our uh hud so let's duplicate these two uh nodes here plug these in all right here we go and we want our ammo health hud uh widget compile and save back in our editor let's hit play and there you see we've got our uh, our ammo. Well, our ammo is working, and uh, the health is reflecting 100, as what was um, determined in our in our pawn. We can also see our print string up in the top left. So let's just open up our weapon. We can delete that, uh, those nodes. We can find them. There's one. Delete. Has that got rid of it? No. Oh, that's the reload one. Where's the? I think it's an ammo check. Yeah, there it is. Okay, we don't need those print strings anymore because we have a proper professional looking HUD element to handle it. The next thing is to make our hit, like our, our, our blood vignette, you know, like you would, you know, like you might see in Call of Duty. So let's go into our materials. Uh, let's right click here, we'll make ourselves a new material. This will be called hit underscore PP. It's our uh, do damage um, material. And we'll also need a material parameter collection so that we can manipulate values inside the material from our blueprint. And this we'll just call, we'll call it our FPS on underscore MPC or material parameter collection. And we'll just open this guy up, make ourselves a new scalar parameter. Uh, we'll leave it at zero, we need it to be zero. And it's going to be, we'll name it our vignette amount. Well, there we go. So that all done, let's open up our hit underscore PP. And then first things first, we just need to change our material domain to the post-processing. And then we're ready to get going. Let's get our scene texture for a start, which will just, re this will just return the rendered frame. You can see this, if we plug into a missive color, we just get, wait a minute, what? Oh yeah, we have to set this to post-process input zero. There we go. So with just our post process input zero, this just returns the rendered frame. And then hold in T and click for a texture sample. We need to get our uh, vignette, our hit vignette, which is this lovely red image here. In fact, let's have a let's just have a quick look at it. So it's a it's a PNG to a nice uh, transparency channel here and some uh, some good looking gore all around the edges. I uh, made this all myself, hosted it on my DeviantArt account some years back because uh, I, I couldn't really find one online, so I just went and made one. Anyway, uh, this is the one that we're going to use. It's included in the downloads below. Just uh, hit up the assets download in the description, and this is the texture that we're going to be using. From here, uh, we need to make sure that these, uh, that this uh, this texture, these UVs, they're properly aligned to our screen in a way that makes sense no matter what resolution we uh, we use. So let's get our screen aligned UVs, and we'll go. 100% uh, of the X and we'll scale the Y uh, to our ratio. This should produce a pretty good result. And also our uh, material pr uh, collection parameter. So let's type in collection, get a collection parameter. The collection we want is our FPS pawn MPC. And the parameter name is just the, the only one that we made, our vignette amount. 
which is going to default to zero. So let's hold an M and multiply. We're going to need to multiply the alpha alpha of our uh, texture with our vignette amount. And we're also going to need to lerp between the texture and our post-processing. So let's plug in our post-processing into the A, plug in our texture into the B, and the result of our multiply into the alpha, and then the lerp into our missive color. Now we'll get this error here. This is because we're handling alpha here, four vectors and three vectors, and we need to exclude the alpha from our post-processing in order to make this effect work. So just find yourself a component mask, mask out just the alpha channel, and then plug that into A. And there we go, it should work just fine. We won't see anything at the moment because our vignette amount is set to zero, but uh, if we, well, if we just make ourselves a, an extra value here for the, uh, for the multiplier, I mean, you can even see here, with it default set to one, this is, the, this is the complete vignette as it properly appears in the frame. And we can change this value, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, two, we can we can really have some fun with that, but we'll use our vignette amount here to control this from our FPS pawn. So let's save that back in our editor here. Let's open up our uh, FPS pawn and let's clip him up here. Make ourselves a new component. We need a post process component and make sure that it defaults to enabled, which it does. And then make ourselves a new array uh, in our post process materials. We need an array, an asset reference. And this will be our, uh, what do we call it? Our hit, hit PP. Power that, save. And then it's time uh, to add some functionality here. So obviously there are many, many ways that we can you know, hit the player and do damage often with um, you know, getting shot by other bullets, but, but just our, our proof of concept prototyping stage, let's just use the G key. So we'll hit G, do some self damage somehow. Uh, come out of this into a branch because we need to check to make sure that we've got health left before we get hurt. So we'll not set, we want to set, we want to get. Get our health, go for a greater than, we need integer, greater than integer, make sure that we have more than zero health. Plug this into our branch. And then if we do, uh, we'll need to set our health to health minus integer minus integer. Let's subtract 10 health every time we hit the G key. All right, so this will get us our raw numbers, our actual uh, you know, health values, but then we want to play our vignette. So let's come out of the set here into a timeline. Add timeline, call it, we'll call it the vignette. Double click it, make ourselves a float track, which is just a, it'll be a scalar value that will change over time. That's the, the point of using this, uh, this timeline. Uh, we can just call it float, doesn't really matter. Right click, add two keys, two keyframes. Our first one, we want time zero, value of one and our second one a time of one and a value of zero and then set our length to one all right so our float here is going to go from one to zero over the span of one second i hope that makes sense to everybody so let's go back to our graph uh we need to move our um node here from play down to play from start just want to control and click drag and you can do that and then uh, out of this uh, update we're going to set scalar parameter value and that parameter is going to be our uh, FPS pawn NPC. The parameter name is going to be our vignette amount and the parameter value is the float from our timeline. Let's compile that and save it and we should be ready to test it. So let's hit play. All right, so here's our, here's our ammo and when we reload, it comes back. All right, all good. And when we hit G, perfect. We get our vignette popping up exactly as we need it to. How good is that? And once we hit zero, obviously we can't because there'll be some sort of death, uh, death functionality built in once we once we hit zero like that. And plus, we've also got our little crosshair that's moving about as we as we jump around and stuff. You'll see that it contracts when we hit the peak of our jump. That's because technically our velocity is zero when we're at the the very top of our jump, so it's going to shrink back in. Again, this is it's a it's a prototyping proof of concept kind of thing. So you'll want to explore different ways to to manipulate the crosshair for when the you know, like for, for if the player shoots or something like that. I just thought this was a good way to get started, good way to sort of get the functionality into the engine. And same with the um, the health and the, the reloading and such. So that about concludes this video. So we've covered, uh, in fact, let's do a little bit of a recap. So here is our main HUD file where we just create these two, uh, two widgets and add them to the viewport. And then our crosshair HUD. <laughs> which looks funny because these aren't in any remote sort of 
sensible position. But we are sitting in the position. We're sitting the, the top and the bottom ones to our X position because they're anchored because uh, they're anchored to the center. As we see here, zero is going to be the direct middle of the screen. And then use these upper and lower bound values to change the, the Y value. And obviously inverting for the bottom, keeping it normal for the top, and same for the left and the right uh, crosshair points. Then our, um, much more easily than that, is our ammo and our health, which are just, just these functions, which all do pretty much the same thing. They're just displaying text in a, in a very easy to, easy to replicate way. So thanks guys for watching this far. Uh, I hope this was uh, interesting to you guys. I've got at least at least one more video in the series to make to, to uh, build out the muzzle flashes, the tracer rounds, and uh, the bullet decals in the distance. Oh, and also the sound effects. I'll cover sound effects probably in that video. But until then, I'll catch you guys next time.